Hi, I'm Gianna and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be recreating a makeup look I did recently that I absolutely loved. It was for my friend's black tie wedding. So it's a little glam. I went bronzy because it was in the evening and it was like late summer, early fall. And I think it turned out awesome. So I wanted to share it with you guys. And I'll put up some pictures of how it looked the day I did it and then show you how I got this look. So let's get started. First for this glowy look, I'm starting off with the Say Glowy Super Gel in the shade Sun Glow. And this one's pretty bronzy and I usually use it mixed in with a foundation or skin tint, but because this is an extra special event, I'm gonna use it on its own and just use it like around the perimeters of my face to add a little bronzy glow. Now I'm gonna use a primer, and I'm using the Power Grip Primer from e.l.f., and this is the pink one with niacinamide. And I'm just using a little bit on my cheeks. I didn't put the Say Glowy Gel there because I didn't want my cheeks to be quite so luminous. So since they're bare, I can just put the primer right on my skin. And this is gonna help my, my blush stay all night because I don't really mind if the rest of it wears off. And I really don't like the texture of this. I can't stand having it all over my face. So this is good enough. Instead of a foundation, I'm gonna use a skin tint. And this is one of the newer skin tints in my collection. And it's from Danessa Myricks. I got shade 10. And I was really drawn to this because it's supposed to be super skin-like and hydrating. And also the shade range looked great. And I'm really happy with the shade that I got. It has just enough yellow to feel like I don't know, not like an orange mask on top of my skin. My skin is super dry, but I find that this doesn't cling to any dry patches and it just looks super natural. That's a big reason why I don't wear foundations is I find it hard to get it to look like my skin and don't have any problem with these skin tints. Although there have been a lot of skin tints on the market coming out that I think are just like foundations. Like they seem pretty full coverage, but I'm glad that this is kind of more true to the name of what I think of when I think of a skin tint. Now I'm gonna add even more bronzy warmth and I'm gonna use a cream bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury. And this is one of my absolute favorite cream bronzers. The tone on this is absolutely beautiful. It's not too red or orange, it's a little more neutral, but it is also very pigmented. So I'm just gonna pick a little bit up on my brush and rub it off in my hand. And I'm even gonna bring it onto my eye a little bit to kind of set the stage for the eyeshadow that I'm gonna do. Okay, so here's the side with bronzer and the side without. And I think it gives me just like a, just got back from vacation glow, but it's not too overdone. I really like it. All right, next we're gonna be going into glow overload. I'm layering three different illuminators and highlighters because I just, in the moment, I couldn't get enough. It was just so much fun. And you can always go a little bigger for these nighttime events that are more fancy. And so I was like, why not? So I'm gonna emphasize my glow and my blush. That was my, my game plan for this look. First, I'm starting off with the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. And this I'm just gonna contain to the my cheeks and a little bit on my chin. Stunning. And since this one is more subtle and skin-like, I feel like it lends itself to being layered with other glow boosting products. So that's what we're gonna do. Next, I'm gonna use this Vision Flush Glow Highlighter in the shade Majesty from Danessa Myricks. And I really like the formula of this. It's very thin and I think it sinks in really well. I just, I don't need more glow products, but she has um, like even a pink color. She's got a lot of, um, a big range of products if you're looking for for something glowy like this. And I think it's only $20. It's, it's a very small tube, but you don't need a lot to get a high impact. Now that we've got that layered on top of the Hollywood Flawless Filter, I feel like it's giving even more of a high shine, like reflective glow. But I really like that neither of these products accentuate my texture. Yeah, I'm getting up in there and it's just looking like healthy, hydrated skin. I'm I'm obsessed. I wouldn't do this every single day, but at night and for a special event, it's just absolutely stunning. Okay, and the last glowy product that we're gonna add to this concoction is the uh, Beauty Light Wand by Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Goldgasm. And this is one of my 
This is my favorite highlighter in the world. It's pretty much made for if you're my skin tone or a little deeper. I think it just looks absolutely beautiful, except especially if you have golden kind of undertones. It just makes it look even more natural. Like that radiance is just coming from within, which I know it is. And this time I'm just keeping this highlighter in a smaller circle. I just kind of want it to be underneath my eye, kind of going from the outer of my eye just to like an, an inch below it. And I love the shade on the tip of my nose because the pearl pigments in this are so fine that it doesn't draw attention to it. Like it's not glittery. It's not gonna make you look like Rudolph or anything like that. Does Rudolph have a red nose or like a lit up nose? Neither here nor there. I think it was both actually. Okay, let's, let's take a step back and look at all the highlighters together because it's easy to get lost in the glowy sauce. But yeah, I feel like that overall glow I don't know, maybe you don't need the Hollywood Flawless filter, but I do like it as a base for that copper glow. It's a more neutral shade for the copper to, to melt into. I think it gives it something to stick to as well. Because it is so thin, the Danessa Mark, sometimes it can kind of fade off in a patch if you had it on bare skin, like no primer. But I think the Flawless filter gives it something to grip onto. And then ugh, I'm obsessed with just having Goldgasm right here, just brings brings everyone else's eyes to your eyes. You know, it's a, it's a wedding, so not all eyes need to be on us. But for me, when I'm catching my, myself in a mirror, I'm just like, wow, I felt so, so pretty. And um, it was just really nice to get glammed up for a special occasion and celebrate my friend. For blush, I'm gonna be starting with a cream, and this is from Phytosurgeons. It's their Skin Spark blush in the shade Ember, which is a gorgeous, like, papaya color. I just grabbed some on my brush, gonna buff it in a little bit. And I'm gonna start with this as the base for my, my cheek color. All right, I'm gonna leave it like this for now because we can always come back and add more cream blush and I'm sure we will. Now it's time for concealer. And the nice thing about doing concealer after blush and bronzer is that if you go a little crazy, you can just cover it up and it makes it look even more seamless. Oh, and I'm using the Kofi Main Mash Concealer. And this is one of my favorite higher coverage concealers. I'd say it's like medium to full. And I love mixing this with a sheer formula as well. Okay, I think that looks fabulous. This formula is so creamy and hydrating and my under eyes are so dry. I really love it. I just want a little bit more brightness because this shade, Glossy Guava, is really close to my skin tone. So I'm able to use it on the rest of my face, but under my eyes, I just want a little more. But I don't want to add more weight since this is a little thicker of a formula. So I'm using this e.l.f. Flawless Brightening Concealer just on the inner parts of my eyes to add a little brightness. It was right there in the name the whole time. Now that we are creamier than anyone thought possible, it's time to set the face. So I'm going to start with my under eyes. I'm going to use these finishing powders from Hourglass, these two shades. I really like them for under my eyes if I'm not super stressed about them looking matte. And since it's in the evening, there's gonna be a lot of low light. I'm not too worried about that. And using these setting powders, or sorry, finishing powders underneath my eye, just adds a little bit more radiance. Like it tempers that glow and that juiciness, but without losing that, yeah, that inner radiance. For the rest of my face, I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder, and this is the shade Medium Beige. There's a tan that exists, I know I've said this before, but they're not selling it anymore, and that one has more yellow undertones, and I know that'd be even more perfect for me, but this'll do for now. I'm just gonna tap this all over my face, and then I'll go back in in some certain areas and use a puff to make it more concentrated. Just the brush set everything really nicely, but I'm still gonna go in with the puff just around my my nose down here and maybe a little bit on the cheeks. See if we can cut down a bit of that shine. Okay, I think that's perfect. I don't think we need to do any more powdering at the moment. All right, let's jump into brows. I'm just gonna be filling them in a little bit with a brow pen. This is from Milani, their weekend brow. And then I'm just gonna cover those hairs and lock them down with the Makeup by Mario brow gel. I just recently started using the shorter side of this wand to comb through my brows first and then go through with the longer side. In my mind, the shorter side really 
lays down a thick amount of gel and then the longer side combs it through and maybe that's what they intended. I didn't really read any, you know, you think brow gel is intuitive. You don't need to know how to use it, but maybe you do. And in addition to that, I've also started just pressing down my brows, just like poking them. And I didn't do that before because I was like, it's not gonna make it stick to the skin. But I think the idea isn't sticking to the skin, but sticking to the other brows. Like they're all in unison now. And I've definitely noticed a difference in the longevity of my brows being a unit, you know, cause sometimes just like an hour later after I apply a brow gel, that one hair that always doing something crazy, it's, it's right back to its old habits. But now they're definitely locked back in. I definitely need to trim some brow hairs up there, but I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared to mess it up. Okay, I kept it super simple on the eyes because I was running incredibly late. <laughs> and so this whole look, I really liked how it came up together and that's why I wanted to show y'all because it took me like under 30 minutes and I think it came out pretty nice. But the eyes I kept very simple. Um, this is the brown sugar palette from ColourPop. It's, I can't even tell you how old this is, like six, seven years old. But I'm just using this sort of neutral brown here. <laughs> And then I'm gonna go back in with this one as well in the outer corner. We've already laid down some bronzer though, so we've got a nice base. And I've got, I've got a little pigmentation on my lips, so that's natural eyeshadow essentially. I'm just laying down that medium brown shade above my crease. And then just kind of blending it in. Forever on my to-do list is learning more about doing my eyeshadow. I've been delving into like videos more on my eye shape and how to, you know, figure out what, where to place eyeshadow based on like all your bones and stuff. It's very overwhelming. And I'm just gonna put a little bit basically at my lash line and flicking it out. And that's where I'm gonna go back over with that darker shade, just so I can add some more depth. Nice and then just wiping that off with it. All right, and with that deeper shade, I'm just focusing it on the outer corner, not bringing it nearly as high. But just pat, 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 blend, blend, blend. I'm just gonna replicate that on the lower lash line. So I'm gonna take that medium shade, Jamocha, and I'm gonna bring this all across my lower lash line. And I'm not super worried about keeping it tied up against my lash line because this is an evening look. It's actually a, it was a black tie wedding. Well, black tie and courage. So they're really polite about it, but I was so excited to get to, to dress up to that level and see everyone else also so fancy. And then I'm taking Sorrel, the darker color, and just gonna keep that to the outer lash line. And if you're like a matte queen, I think you could just take a shade like this and put that on the inner and middle part of your lid and you'd be good to go. But I like a bit of shimmer. So I'm gonna be taking a super soft shadow from ColourPop and this is in the shade Rosebud. And I love this bronzy shade. Show it to you on my hand. Gorgeous. This is also one of my fave one and done shadows. It's just so stunning. Like I said, I love wearing it on its own, but when you have all these other brown tones going on, it just feels so warm and chocolatey. I can't wait to wear this all fall long. I mean, I've been, already been wearing it all summer, but you know. Oh, I love it. Totally check out these ColourPop Super Shock Shadows if you haven't already. There are like, I swear there are at least 70 colors, so many different finishes. Some are super glittery, some are more satin. They keep raising the prices. Everyone keeps raising the prices, but I think they're now at like six or seven dollars each, which, you know, I remember when they were like five, so. Okay, I think I'm just gonna use the shade Ginger in here for my inner corner. And I saw this creator on TikTok. I'll put her name here because she has some awesome tips. And she was saying that what she does for her inner corners, instead of just kind of like doing this here, here thing that I feel like we've all been doing for a while. Um, she kind of puts it here, like in her tear duct, and then drags it along her orbital bone. And I really feel like it does 
open up the eye a bit more. Very pretty. I think this is the wrong kind of brush to use. <laughs> I think you want something like this, a little flatter. Yeah. Look at that. You can just kind of tap out the edges a bit. I'm just gonna take the blending brush I was using. I know it's like, use a clean one. I, I do not feel like, the thought of adding another brush to wash just like pains me. There you go. Did it muddy anything? I don't think so. Okay, and now those are the eyes for real. I'm gonna save mascara until after I do my setting spray because I hate the feeling of like that sticky spray making my lashes stick together. Okay, we're now in powder territory. So we did all those cream products and even though we set everything, I'm gonna go back on top with powder bronzers and blush just to make sure everything lasts as long as humanly possible. Especially because we were dancing, we were eating lots of food, drinking a lot of cocktails. So that's a lot of sweat involved and we want to make sure at the end of the night we're glowing and still looking beautiful. All right, I'm using Caramel Cutie from Fendi Beauty. I have, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I've had this for absolute ages, I think since like 2017. And I love using this as a bronzer for my skin tone, but also as eyeshadow, like just knocking some in the crease. Very easy, very stunning. Love it. All right, next is powder blush. I'm gonna be using NYX Sweet Cheeks Matte Blush in the shade Summer Breeze. And I got this just to top all my orange, brush orange blushes. I have so many and they're all cream. So I have issues sometimes with longevity, especially if I'm touching my face as I always do. But this has been great and it goes well with a lot of different orange shades because it's, it's not too vibrant. It's more on the muted side. And just a light dusting. I really like this light layer cheek brush too from Real Techniques. It's the 430 brush. I don't think they sell it anymore, but there's any kind of like duo fiber, like differing length <laughs> brush. It helps just get a softer dispersal of all that powder pigment. So if you have so if you have a blush that's more pigmented, this helps you not go overboard as easily. If you want to go overboard, you know you can. And then I couldn't stop there. I had to add another powder blush and this is Rococo from M Cosmetics. This is in their Heaven's Glow formula. This has a bit more shimmer and it's also like a tan color. So I thought it would go well with this bronzy look. I love it. It almost gives this like coppery burnished color. I don't know, there's something about it that just feels like metal that's been sitting out in the sun all day. I think it's just such a pretty shade. There's a bit of red and rosiness in it as well, but it's still very brown. I can't wait to wear this more in the fall. All right, now we set the face. So I'm gonna be using MAC Fix Plus all over. And then to lock everything in place, I'm gonna be using the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flaw Setting Spray in the White Tea Bali scent, which I save for special occasions and vacations. I was like, yes, I can use it. It just smells like such a nice hotel. I love it. And I read somewhere that after you do your setting spray, it's nice if you go back over with your powder puff to kind of lay down any of your, your vellum hairs that might be popping up from all that, that moisture. And I haven't dermaplaned my face in years, so we, we got peach fuzz over here. All right, now I can apply mascara safely. I use my Shiseido Lash Curler. This thing is amazing, especially for my eye shape. It just grips, not too tightly, but it grips and gathers every lash. And I just do two pumps at the base, two pumps at the middle, and a pump near the top. And I, that just gives like the perfect fan. I will say I was getting my, I was getting like modeling shots done for my portfolio and the makeup artist had me do my own curling. And he was like, you did such a good job. I was like, thank you. <laughs> and I was using the Rare Beauty Mascara for my eyes. You can see the difference with them all lifted and fanned. I love that it adds length and volume and it makes my lashes feel wispy and beautiful without being like super chunky. And now that this has dried out a lot, I don't even have to wipe it off as much as I used to because it's not as liquidy. I absolutely love this mascara. Oh, and I had heard a trick for applying mascara and not getting it on your eyeshadow is to look down into a mirror while you're doing it. And I definitely think it works. I just totally forget all the time. Ugh, it's so beautiful. 
All right, we're, we're in the, what do they call it? The final sprint, the last leg, the final lap. Oh goodness, I just realized I forgot eyeliner. We're gonna do lips and then come back to eyeliner because I can't be near the wet mascara at the moment. Let me wipe off my aquaphor. I'm just gonna line my lips with cork by MAC and kind of smudge it out, get a nice blurred line. And I'll just add some to the inner corners to give more of a like 3D plumping effect. I do not do that every day, I don't. This has just been my go-to lip this summer and the, like the past couple months in general. Um, this is the Roman Juicy Lasting Tint in number 19 Almond Rose. So after doing my little liner smudgy bit, I'll just add some into the center of my lip and smudge it out. And then I just blot that off a little bit because next I'm adding the Summer Fridays lip balm in Vanilla Beige. And this just adds like a nice brown kind of caramel tone on top of the red. And I just think it looks so elegant and sultry. Okay, last two things. Let's add just like a little flick of eyeliner. This is by the brand Clio and it's their Extreme Gel Espresso Pencil Liner. And I just have a really dark brown shade of it. But I like that the tip is so fine that I can just get right in there and make my little baby wing. And I don't really have to fuss or worry about it getting blown out of proportion. I think it's beautiful. And then last, last thing, of course, you got to revisit, got to wrap around and do the blush again. So I'm just going to take a little bit of ember, really diffuse it, and then just right on the apples of my cheeks. So by putting this on top of all those powders, I feel like we just get a little extra longevity out of it and resaturate that color as well. Okay, and this is the look all done. I'm so happy with how it turned out. And even the first time, I just was the perfect bronzy glam for this late summer, early fall wedding. And you know, it's still pretty warm out. So if you have any events coming up, definitely try this bronzy glam look. And thank you so much for watching this video and going on this little tutorial with me. It was really fun to recreate this look. If you like chatting about makeup, you can check out my recent makeup faves video and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.